Hey everybody, welcome back. Today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna conclude a three-part video series on inline muzzleloaders. The first part in this series was, um, what was the first part in this series? Um, it was components of a muzzleloader. So if you haven't seen that, check that out. The second part in this series was how to clean your muzzleloader. And today what we're gonna talk about is how to shoot your inline muzzleloader. So if you haven't seen those first two, check them out because I'm not gonna cover components or cleaning in this video. You know, that's not what we're gonna do. I already covered that. This is the conclusion and I really just wanna show you how to, you know, once you've bought your inline muzzleloader, how do you do it on your own? How do you take it to the range and side it in and make sure that, you know, you're ready to go for your hunt? One, one thing to note is in New Mexico, currently we are allowed to hunt with a scope on an inline muzzleloader. In, in a lot of states, you can't do that. So like Colorado, you can't do that. Um, so just make sure that wherever your state is, you know, um, before you mount a scope on your muzzleloader, inline muzzleloader, make sure that it's actually allowed. You know, so here in New Mexico, it is allowed. So Mike uh, bought a brand new muzzleloader. He put a scope on it and we're just gonna go straight to the range, right out the box and just get him uh, dialed in. So most everything that you know I want you to learn from this video if you've never done the inline muzzleloader thing is is gonna be covered out in the range on the field. I just recorded everything that we did. I tried not to exclude any details when I when I cut this video so that you could see every single step that we did and know that it's not intimidating, no big deal. You can do it on your own and you can get ready for your hunt all by yourself. You don't need to hire anybody, you can do it all on your own. And the first thing that I didn't mention in the field um, was just to make sure that your weapon, if it's brand new, you know, you're assuming it's clean, but uh, maybe it's not. So you might want to go to the cleaning video, clean your weapon before you get out into the field, before you start this process, to make sure that you have a clean weapon. And when you watch the cleaning video, you'll know why that's important, and, and, and I'll talk about that in this video too. Your muzzleloader is not going to perform the way it should if it's not clean and dry. So just make sure that it's clean and then you can jump into this video and start this process of sighting in your inline muzzleloader. So let's get right into it and I'll interject as needed. First thing we're gonna do, <clears throat> we're gonna get a primer. Make sure you can see through your, your there's nothing blocking, you know what I mean? Like make sure it's not loaded. It's brand new, obviously, but yeah. you can see right through it. You can even unscrew your breech plug if you wanted to, just to make sure, but you don't have to. But if you can see can light put through some that. on here, man. Yeah, I have some right here. Good idea. That's an experienced muzzleloader hunter. He's gonna put some anisees on the breech plug right away because we already know how hard it is to get that thing off <laughs> <laughs> after a few shots. So this is a brand new muzzleloader we're setting in today. Our deer hunt starts soon. Mm -hmm. So he's just coating that breech plug with anisees. <clears throat> and as he screws it on, it'll, it'll spread over the threads. I've been promising a how to shoot a muzzleloader video for like since 2017 so <laughs> seriously <laughs> I'm like might as well do it okay so hand tight now what he's gonna do is he's gonna shoot one primer there's no load in that muzzleloader you've been watching so there's no load he's gonna shoot one primer mm -hmm. does it need to be flush or no okay okay close the Action. Okay. Pull your trigger back. It wouldn't be. It's not going to be too loud, but put these on since I have them. Okay, go ahead. So what that did was it just cleared his barrel of any moisture. It's pretty humid this morning. Of any moisture and debris. So now we're ready to put an actual round through this sucker. So one thing I just want to emphasize is that primer, right? That first, you'll see Mike, there was no load. He just put a primer in. And what that does is it just dries out your barrel and it cleans it out of any debris, just right off the bat. There's no, there's no powder and there's no lead in there. 
So you just put that primer in. This is before your hunt too. That morning you wake up, before you load your weapon, put a primer in and, and shoot it that morning in camp. You know, um, just point it down to the ground and, and shoot the primer. Um, and that'll just make sure you're ready for a dry and clean loading of your muzzle loader. And then you know you have confidence in the field that you're not gonna have a misfire. There's no moisture in there and there's no debris. So that is extremely important. I highly recommend you do that when you wake up the morning before you start your hunt. So let's save your primer till the end and let's load the muzzle loader. So we're using triple seven pallets. They're 50 grains each. You can use, I think Blackhorn has been t pretty much accepted as kind of the best. It's loose powder, but... Um, Two right? Yeah, and actually, yeah, go ahead. But they give you this, this little um, wire here so that you don't have to touch the, huh. the powder. Just in case your hands have a lot of moisture, you don't want to wet that powder. So use use that if you can. And then he's putting his bullet right in the top here. And then he's going to get his ramrod. And he's going to push that bullet. should be pretty easy. This rifle, this muzzleloader has never been fired. You're going to push it all the way down to where it's touching. Did you feel it touch? Yeah. So you want to make sure that that round is seated on that, on that powder. Okay. So now we're almost fully loaded. And when you shoot, you want to make sure this is on that, not your barrel, because it'll cause some weird accuracy issues if you rest your barrel on the <coughs> on that rest there versus the the stock. So he put in a primer, so he is he is loaded, he has not cocked it back yet, but he is loaded. So you want to, want to put in some hearing protection. He's gonna put in put on his hearing protection. And we're shooting out to 100. I don't know if you can see. You might not be able to see. There it is. There's our target, 100 yards out. So we're gonna sight this in for 100. Got a nice backdrop there. Bullet ain't going anywhere, except into that dirt. So you can get your magnification where you want it. I have it. Okay. And then just go ahead and cock back and... I can't remember the kick. Is it pretty rough or? I don't think it's that bad. Okay. Mike's a pretty good shot. So after this first shot, we'll make an adjustment. Okay, Mike, tell me which one you were aiming for. This. Okay, and show me where the bullet is. Look where it Okay. So get a measurement. Unless I was aiming for this one, great. You don't remember? I'm pretty sure I was aiming for that guy. This would make more sense. Okay, that makes, let's go with that one. Okay, that'd be a good adjustment. So get a measurement uh, vertically and windage. I was right about that, two inches. Okay. Hope you weren't aiming for that. No, okay. I was aiming for this one. What do we got? About six and a quarter. Almost six and a half. Six and a half, okay. So let's go okay. make that adjustment and shoot it one more time. Okay, so a quarter inch. So we gotta go six and a half. So four turns equals one inch. So we gotta go 24 clicks this way. Cause this is Clockwise up. or counter? So counterclockwise is up, clockwise is down. So we gotta go down, count so 24. 24. That was probably two. Okay, there was 24, so that gets us to six, and then it was another half, right? Okay. So go two more clicks. Okay. And then for windage, you were two inches to the right? Yep. Okay, so we're gonna adjust that side. What does it say? One click is one quarter inch of 100 yards. Okay, and then left is to the right. So we need to go left, right? So this way, is that what you're saying? So it's saying 
it's saying oh so if you're shooting to the left you need to turn to the right right yeah because we want the bullet to start going left so we oh. need to move it so where it's going to move left so it'll be clockwise and we're going to do let's do two inches so there's four clicks in each inch so you need eight clicks okay Okay, cool. So with muzzle loader, you'll notice we're gonna clean after every two shots. But he's ready to, to put one more in there and shoot this one, and then we'll have to swab it out by a little cleaning kit. So two more pallets. Mm -hmm. Okay, he got his pallets in. Bullet, ramrod. And just every time you push it down, you'll get to know your muzzle loader. You'll know where that ramrod needs to go. A lot of powder there now. Yeah. Okay, now it's seated. Remember when we were doing yours, we broke the rod? Yeah. So you'll notice from the first time he loaded this, this muzzle loader to now, that was a little, quite a bit harder to load the ammo. So that's why you're going to be cleaning after some people clean after every single shot um we'll do two and then we'll we'll clean it and we'll shoot again there's his primer take your time and that looks to me Let's say 10 inches. So let's go 40 clicks. Am I going, and I'm going this way, right? Or I can't remember, I already forgot. Up is this way, so we want to go clockwise. Okay. So 40. 40 clicks. Okay, so we should be 10 inches lower, but now we gotta clean it. At least brush out all that. So take your breech plug out. At least it comes out somewhat easy. You're gonna take the breech plug out and we're just gonna swab the barrel real good and get some of that powder out of there. I'd snap your action close so you don't hurt yourself. So he's just, just swabbing it. Just getting some of that excess powder out. Yeah, it's gonna be harder down here. This is a lot more powder. Okay. Should be good down there. Dang. Put your barrel down and yeah, it's and we'll take a cloth. I have a cloth. And we'll swab one cloth through. I'd point your barrel down and get all that powder out. He's gonna wrap this onto that, the end here of that brush. Right here. I know the whole thing was spinning out. Take this wire brush off, put on this felt or this cotton. And he's just gonna swab through to clear out any, any excess, what they call fouling, just powder basically. These muzzle loaders get extremely dirty, so two shots. I mean, you could try going three and you're gonna have a hard time getting that, that bullet down. It's probably, it? Yeah, yeah, it's in the... Just push it through with this, from this side. How black that is. Two shots already disgusting. All right, we're ready to go for a third shot. This one should be pretty freaking close. We'll see. 
Same thing, you guys know, now 100 grains of powder. Keep your powder box closed because you don't want it to get wet or dirty. Bullet, ramrod. How much easier was that, Mike? Butter, there you go. Make sure it's seated. You're making sure that that round rod goes to the same place every time you load. Let me put my hearing protection on. So one thing to note is if your muzzle loader is hard to load, if you're having a hard time getting that, that lead down the barrel, it's dirty. It's and, and if you and if you're struggling, really pushing, yeah, you can get it in there, but you know your your uh, your barrel is really dirty. There's a lot of powder in there, a lot of fouling, as they say, and don't just don't fight with it. Just neck, take the shot, and then the next one, clean it out real good before you load it again. And you'll notice um, in the next part of the of the video when Mike cleans it and loads that next round, super easy, right? And that's really the way you want it. Four inches high, maybe three. We're dead center though, which is nice. Yeah. We're like, I'm right above the bullseye. You know what, we, we may have even over adjusted because look how straight your those two shots are, those last two shots. And you're about in half an inch or an inch to the left. That's how straight you are, dude. See it? So if you wanted, you probably could go a couple of clicks back to the right if you want, but you nah, I like to. where it's at. So we need so to go do this again, right? So what is that? 16 clicks? Yeah, for four inches. Let's do uh 20. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and do the. So up is this way. So you need to go down. So clockwise. But how many am I doing? 20 or 16? Let's do 14. So we're finding that every two shots will clean, right? And if you think about it in the field, if you take a shot and you need to take a follow-up shot, you don't have time to clean your weapon. So you actually want to know how it performs at least if you can't clean every single after every single shot. Um, <clears throat> for sighting in purposes, maybe you could clean every single shot. We, it's unnecessary, we're finding. You know, we, every two shots we clean, we're shooting, and, and we're good. I mean, even in the in the field, I know people are like, oh, it's a muzzle loader. Do you have time to reload? You can get pretty quick. You can reload in about a minute, you know, and if you have to take another shot. So I'm going to turn around and show Mike shooting another another time here. I'm a little up on that one. Getting closer. So we got this sighted in. So Mike's going to clean that out. We'll probably take a couple more shots through his, and then we're going to check mine. I'm gonna go over there and show you guys where the progress of each shot so that you know um, how we did this. So I'm gonna walk over there and show you guys how we did it. Okay, so let's go through the progression of this. He was aiming for this target initially. This was the very first shot. So if you look at that, it's like two feet high, maybe a little less. Second shot was here, but he was aiming for this target. So now we were about 14 inches high, okay? We made another adjustment, came down to here. At that point, we were about three inches high. This was his last shot right now. And he feels like that's exactly where he aimed. He was, he, uh, he felt like he, he pulled up a little. So we're gonna leave it. He's gonna shoot a couple more times and we're gonna see, um, you know, if he can get more right in here. You wanna be in here, right? Obviously, but. So I'm gonna cover these holes. And we're going to let him shoot a couple more times. One of the things I forgot to show you guys is just the target. I just made it last night. Nothing fancy. Two by four going up the sides. And then one two by four there. And one there closer to the bottom to stabilize it. And then just duct taped the uh, cardboard on there. And then we put on our sticky targets. Perfect. There's our backdrop. I mean, that hill right there is, I don't know if you can tell from the video, but it's, that's at least a 60 foot, 70 foot high hill, you know, so plenty of safety built into this area and we're shooting from over there so we're, we're really in a bowl here and uh, BLM we're on public land and the reason why we picked this location we've been trying to find a 
closest shooting spot for us to our to where we live and there's a lot of private <laughs> private and tribal property um close to where we live and so i found this little chunk of blm on the map and and uh so we came out and explored it um was it last year a couple years ago and ended up finding this little spot and uh it's perfect it's perfect for us and we can really we can probably see over there there's a nice backdrop that way i mean we could could set up to shoot pretty far just have to take a drive over and make sure no one's over there but um but this right here is extremely safe you can see everything it's got two nice backdrops so it's been a nice little area for us really like it all right i'm gonna do upper section lower left target maybe aim for the small one in the more in the middle okay not not the small small one but just i just don't want you to hit the wood by accident and we're screwed you know what i mean Ready? So, you should be pretty freaking on wherever you aim so And we're shooting 245 grain, 50 caliber rounds. In New Mexico, you can't shoot anything smaller than a 50 cal in your muzzleloader. It's illegal. A lot of other states you can. Because it won't kill them right away. Is that why? They just think that so look, this it's is too a, small. This but is it's the second round. In the second round. And it's a, it's a little bit more of a you struggle. You can put it on the ground, bro, if you want to get a little more leverage. You can hear the bullet like sliding through the powder, too. And he's still being careful because you don't want to crush that powder in there. So he's he's pushing it down, but he's not freaking overpowering well, also, it. Also, too, we broke your rod trying to cram that thing down there, yeah. but we weren't also <clears throat> cleaning it every two. It was like after like our sixth shot, we realized maybe we should clean it more frequent. <laughs> Get a little more in front of me. Okay. Okay. And you're going to use this on the hunt. We're gonna have to put a lanyard on it. You're gonna use Ann's rangefinder, just so you know, you know what I mean? So he's gonna take a standing shot at 100, just to kind of see how it feels. Obviously not gonna be like perfect, but in a hunting situation, you know, this may be what you have to do. On the paper I'm gonna do one more standing shot This is my second standing though. Standing 100 yards? <laughs> That's pretty freaking good, dude. So my first shot, <clears throat> shot mine too. I was aiming for this and I, I felt it pull a little. So that's mm -hmm. say two inches right and half an inch low. So second shot, I made no adjustment, but second shot, I took my time a little more. And so mine's ready to go. I mean, yeah, I mean, we could, I'm just preparing if we can't set up, which I'm hoping we can, but if we can't, I'm just going to Yeah, it out. might be a Boom. quick shot. No, I mean, it's a good, one of the things Mike was talking about too was in between, you know, if you're cleaning every two shots, let's see if I can get this to focus. That breech plug right here is where the, see it? Look how dirty it is your primer is exploding through that hole there which ignites your powder and so see how he's cleaning it you want to keep that clean because if there's debris that explosion is not going to be as efficient right the ignition so keep that clean that too between shots for sure make sure you keep this powder dry at all times people are like i don't know how most orders because i get misfires you're getting misfires because your powder's wet or your rifle's too dirty that's basically the two the two reasons 
Um, just keep everything, especially when you store it at home, keep everything in a dry, cool area. Look, these triple sevens, how long have I had this? Four years? These triple sevens have been sitting in a dry area, cool area for four years and we're still using them. Um, so just keep it cool and dry. I mean, that's really the, the rule of muzzle loaders: clean, dry, clean and dry. That's what you want. That's it, that wraps us up. That's the third part in this series. I'm done with the inline muzzle loaders. If you have any questions, I'm glad to shoot some some future videos to answer any of those questions. But uh, really, I think I have at this point now four different videos on my channel covering inline muzzle loaders. So um, hopefully it's enough information for you to feel confident enough to go buy one and do this on your own, do the whole process on your own. And you know, in New Mexico, you know, muzzle loaders uh, for me are imperative because we have drawn more muzzleloader tags than I've drawn archery or rifle tags for sure rifle tags but uh, believe it or not it's it seems like it's even easier now to draw a muzzleloader tag than it is a bow tag I mean it's like archery has just become such a you know such a trendy thing I guess these days in the hunting world but um, but muzzleloaders there's it seems like you know and depending on your hunt right depending on you have to look at the numbers for the specific hunt you're applying for in New Mexico anyway. It's different everywhere. But it seems like uh, we've drawn even our third choice muzzleloader hunt several times um, in New Mexico. So there's a reason that we use muzzleloaders. You know, it's not necessarily that they're our favorite, but we play the odds and we draw more tags. So you get to be out in the field hunting, you know, versus wishing you had drawn a tag a lot of times. So that's really our, my ultimate purpose, you know, is just how do I draw more tags? And in New Mexico, sharing a little secret with you, you'll draw more tags if you have a muzzleloader. Um, uh, you know, some one of the muzzleloader hunts. You have to search through it. You still have to do a lot of work to figure out which hunts are, are easier to draw, which ones are worth it. But uh, we have found a few that we can pretty much draw every other year, uh, even as a third choice. So it's totally worth it for us. So I hope these videos um, really helped you out. Um, let me know if they did. Please subscribe, um, like, share these videos. Um, you know, that goes a long way to, to helping me um, keep content coming. Aside from that, good luck on your hunts this year, and I'll see you next time.